that's just so exciting because you never know where you can make an impact in biology, right? And it's just so amazing to think that something that many of us would discard or askew like sewage could actually be front line and center in the fight against this COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, we were also, um, for well, first of all, it actually made us take the safety really seriously. We always treat a sewage sample as BSL-2 and we have really um, careful precautions in mind, but that really made it hit home. Like, wow, this these samples, um, we got to take this seriously. Um, but yeah, it was such a cool moment that we realized that we had this resource um, and it made us reach out to other partners to figure out where we could get samples from. And that has been really fun. Now I'm partnering with the Southern California Coastal Water Research Project, where they also are collecting samples actually from seven different wastewater districts. And we have another plant that I've been driving down to in Escondido. So now our catchment area is 16 million people. So we can, with eight samples a week, we can get some idea of the virus in 16 million people. That's amazing. Um, so is it your hunch that the virus can actually spread through sewage or are you just saying that this is going to be a valuable diagnostic tool? I'm saying it's a valuable diagnostic tool. I will always take these samples very seriously and step one in our process is pasteurization. So we kill the virus with heat. We don't even know if it's infectious, but we take that step no matter what. The wastewater is a really harsh environment. So actually our, the viral fragments that we've recovered are not complete genomes so far. So it's clear that the virus is struggling in this environment. It's a really harsh environment. So I'm not actually too worried about the sewage samples themselves. Another question that I think is really important is whether the virus can travel, for example, in high rise apartment buildings, if the plumbing is faulty or there's air vents that are connected to the plumbing systems, that has actually happened even with SARS-1, the original classic SARS um, in 2003, there were instances of the virus traveling from one apartment to another. In fact, one of the biggest outbreaks happened in a vertical column in a high rise where everybody um, underneath a particular family's household where there was somebody who was infected, everyone underneath them also became infected or many of them did. And that um, is something that's being investigated really carefully because that could be a problem. Is it possible for you to get archived sewage samples to see when the virus actually made its way here first? Yes and no. So many sewage um, treatment plants have um, one liter of composite sample that they've put away in a cold room every day. And so, and those go back for some time. Now, how the virus degrades over time is another question. And so it, it does appear that the virus is somewhat stable at four degrees, but when you get a negative answer, it's a little bit hard to say whether it's because of storage or whether it's really about the levels of virus that were there at the moment the sample was collected. Can your method tell us if the COVID-19 virus is mutating at all? Yeah, it actually can. So um, that's not the most common approach for the wastewater based epidemiology at the moment is actually using the same approach that we're using in the clinics, which is more of a yes or no is a particular gene there. However, what our lab is doing, and there's a few other labs around the world trying to do this as well, is we're sequencing the genomes from the virus. And so as a result, we absolutely can pick up on the mutations. Um, and that is fascinating for many reasons. First of all, we can use it to track the virus. Like if there's a lot of diversity that suggests that the virus has had a lot of opportunities to mutate. So it suggests that the virus is more widespread. I guess my, my last question is what's, what's the percentage of positivity that you find in the sewage samples? Are there oh, that's some a, samples that are negative? That's a great question. So um, we, have, we have been testing samples since April. At first, we didn't get any positives. And I don't know for sure whether that's because the viral load was so low, it was below our limit of detection, or if just our methods weren't as good yet. So we spent a lot of, we put a lot of energy into troubleshooting um, and concentrating larger volumes of virus so that we would, larger volumes of sewage so that we would get more virus um, in the samples that we were processing. So since in, in May, we got positives for all eight wastewater districts that we were sampling. Um, so, so not every single sample was positive and there was some disagreement about whether it became positive from our um, QPCR classic 
clinical style approach versus the sequencing approach, but we have gotten a positive signal from every uh, wastewater district um, that we've tested. Well, Katrina, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. As always, thank you for sharing with us your fascinating approaches and data. I, I, I find it very fascinating and intri intriguing, and I'm sure the community will as well. Thank you. Thank you.